You might have heard the old saying, I'll move heaven and earth. While I don't know much about heaven, you surely have the power to move the earth. Yes, you heard that right. Today, we are diving into something truly earth-shattering, quite literally. Stay tuned to find out how a little playful streak of physics tells us every time we throw a ball up in the air, we end up shaking the earth. Welcome to the Scribbled Equation. I am Dr. Ashmeet Singh. I'm a physics professor with a PhD in theoretical physics, and I'm here to show you how physics and math are lurking in every corner of our lives, how wondrous and intriguing our universe is. All this by just scribbling a few equations. If you're new here, I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the bell icon below. If you're back again for more, thank you for being here. It's great to see you again. All right, back to the scribbling. Let's start with a fundamental truth about the mechanical laws of the universe. Newton, in his third law of motion, described the relationship between interacting pairs of objects. In simple terms, if you have two objects, let's call them A and B, then the force that A exerts on B is equal in strength but opposite in direction of the force that B exerts on A. Action equals minus reaction. Push on a wall, the wall pushes back. Jump off a skateboard, the skateboard rolls back. It's the universe's way of saying what goes around comes around. Now often the phrases action and reaction conjure up the image of a cause followed by an effect. But that's not really the case. The two forces acting on the two objects are acting simultaneously and one does not precede the other. Now you see, Newton's third law is in action all the time. For instance, when you are swimming, you push the water backwards and in return, the water pushes you forward. It is also the basic principle behind a rocket launch. The engine pushes the gases downward and in return, the gases propel the rocket upwards. Want a more down-to-earth example? Go take a walk. Yes. Even the simple act of walking is a demonstration of Newton's third law in action. You see, every time you step forward, you're pushing backwards against the ground, and in return, the ground pushes your foot forward, hence propelling you ahead. It's the perfect little dance of action and reaction. It's that simple a principle that allows us both to go for a walk and also to be spacefarers. Now I know what you're thinking. Cool, but what does this have to do with moving the Earth? To illustrate that, let's revisit our old friend Dave Monday, who took a plunge over the Niagara Falls in a barrel. Now I made a full detailed video about the physics of the fall and I highly encourage you to check it out over here. But anyway, here is the crux. When Dave Monday fell about 51 meters over the Niagara Falls, in about 3.2 seconds, he was falling under the force of gravity, accelerating at about 9.8 meters per second every second. The force on them was the force of gravity due to the Earth. Gravity was pulling them down with the force, which was the combined weight of the barrel and Mr. Monday, nothing but the combined mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which we found out to be approximately about 3,700 newtons of gravitational force towards the Earth. Here is the amazing part. According to Newton's third law, while the Earth was exerting a gravitational force of about 3,700 newtons on Dave and his barrel towards the Earth's center, they, on the other hand, were also exerting an equal gravitational force on the Earth of the same magnitude, about 3,700 Newtons, just in this case, in the opposite direction, an action-reaction pair, if you will. All that is to say, as Dave was hurtling towards the water below, the Earth was rushing up to meet them. Now, before you start imagining the Earth doing a little hip-hop, let's crunch some numbers. We can use Newton's second law to figure out 
the acceleration of the Earth in this case. The Earth's mass is about 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms or so. Now the second law tells me that the acceleration that the Earth would undergo is going to be given by the force of gravity on the Earth divided by the mass of the Earth. Just the second law, F equals ma, rearranged. This gives us an acceleration of about 6 times 10 to the minus 22 meters per second square. Contrast this with the acceleration due to gravity that Mr. Monday and the barrel were undergoing, the 9.8 meters per second every second. They were both feeling the same gravitational force. They just had such wildly different masses leading to such very distinct accelerations. That's teeny tiny, almost laughably small tiny. To give you a sense, in the 3.2 seconds that Dave Monday fell to the water below, the Earth undergoing this small but constant acceleration would have moved up by a distance, let's call that delta y e for the Earth, about one half acceleration of the Earth a sub e times the time of the fall square, one half a t square. This comes out to be about three times 10 to the minus 21 meters. That's quite small, almost a million times smaller than the diameter of the hydrogen atom. But here is the kicker. This movement, as minuscule as it might be, actually exists. The Earth rushed to meet Mr. Monday, even though it was just by a billionth of a billionth of a meter. Every time you jump, take a step, or even play catch, you're actually giving the Earth a tiny little nudge. The numbers involved might be small, but the principle is not. Think about it. Every time you bounce a ball, you're not just playing a game, you're actually engaging in a back and forth with the planet. Newton's third law is at play at all times, everywhere, no matter how big or small the forces are. So next time you leap into the air or even toss a crumpled ball of paper into the trash, you're actually moving the earth, even if just by a little bit. It's a humbling reminder of the profound interconnectedness that weaves throughout the fabric of our universe, illustrating that even the smallest actions can ripple through the cosmos in ways we might never fully comprehend. I'll see you next time.